My in-laws are truly wonderful people. There's Peter, my father-in-law. He's a man of few words, but he's always looking out for us. And Isabella, my caring and kind mother-in-law, treats me just like her own daughter. I feel incredibly lucky to have them as a family. Or at least that's what I thought. This is a story about a challenging incident involving me and my sister-in-law, Brittany. My name is Monica. I'm 28 years old. My husband, Carter, is two years older than me. We're coming up on our first wedding anniversary. Meeting Carter was a happy coincidence that happened when I joined my current company. I fell head over heels for him when he frequently visited our office for business meetings while I was working at the front desk. Carter reciprocated, striking up conversations with me every chance he got. And after a long friendship, we began dating. Things went smoothly, and eventually we tied the knot. Some people cautioned. Aren't you rushing into this? Maybe you should be more careful. But I had faith in his character, and I respected him. I believed that being with him would make me happy. And true to my expectations, Carter's kindness didn't fade after marriage. Our relationship remained as strong as when we were dating. His parents also loved me very much, and we were able to live a happy married life. Especially Isabella welcomed me into the family with open arms. I grew to love Isabella like a mother. According to famous stories, Isabella had a difficult time with her own mother-in-law when she married Peter. Based on her own experiences, she was determined to be a better mother-in-law when her son got married. Monica, if you ever have any concerns, please feel free to talk to me. Isabella told me soon after our wedding. Thank you, Isabella. And that includes any complaints about Carter. Ha, huh, you're too much, Isabella. Our relationship was so good that we could share jokes like this. Thinking about their twilight years, we decided to live in an apartment, a 10-minute walk away from my in-law's home. We visited them often and regularly shared meals with them. All seemed well in our married life. That was until a few months later, when we found ourselves threatened by someone. It was just two months into our marriage when trouble erupted with Brittany. Three years Carter Sr., Brittany had a particular fondness for her brother, that surprised many. It even caused Carter some distress in the past. It seems Carter had his share of struggles with this in the past as well. I knew from the start that Brittany had her gripes, and I had a sense of how infatuated she was with Carter. But the reality? Way beyond what I had imagined. When Carter and I decided to get married, Brittany wasn't exactly thrilled. And when she found out I worked as a receptionist, she didn't hold back. You're a receptionist? Oh, how nice. You get paid just to sit around, huh? You probably flirted with Carter to land that job, right? That's the impression I had of receptionists. Poor Carter, falling for a gold digger like you? She said all this while Carter was right there, listening. She probably just couldn't stand the idea of her adorable little brother getting married and slipping out of her control. Brittany always had this displeased expression whenever she was around me. Funny enough, Brittany's actually married. She lives with her husband, Ricky, in an apartment about a 10-minute walk from our in-law's place. So Brittany and I are essentially neighbors. Our lives overlap a lot, leading to frequent run-ins. Hey, where are you off to? I bumped into Brittany as I was heading out for groceries. Oh, Brittany... I'm just on my way to the supermarket. You're not going to the closest one, are you? Uh, yes, actually. Did you not? I'm going there, too. I can't handle running into you even when I'm out shopping. I mean, it's the cheapest and has the best selection. Although I was confused by Brittany's comment, I responded desperately. But the cheapest supermarket nearby is that one. They have a good selection. I don't care about your reasons. Just listen to me. With that, she gave my shoulder a hard shove. Ouch! Hm, serves you right. She glanced at me as I stumbled and then walked away. 
I was hoping to keep things civil, but Brittany wouldn't have it. She'd confront me and resort to physical aggression, just like that. Having Brittany around was becoming a real stressor for me. Finally, at my wit's end, I talked to Carter about it. Listen, we need to do something about Brittany. She's been acting out again. All right, I owe a lot to Brittany, but if you say it's a problem, I'll have a serious talk with her. It seemed Brittany was still not pleased with me. Up till now, she'd only made snide comments when we bumped into each other. But then she took it up a notch by deliberately ambushing me outside my home. As soon as she saw me coming, she'd rush over and start hurling insults. Not satisfied with just that, she started sending passive-aggressive messages on the phone and WhatsApp as well. How dare you rat me out to Carter? How does it feel? turning him against me with your lies. You're not even in his league. When are you finally going to divorce him? Do us all a favor and just disappear. And so on. Even thinking about it now, it's all so terrible. But because she's Carter's sister, whom I loved, I initially responded politely to her messages. The more politely I responded, the bolder she got with her insults. Eventually, I'd had enough and started ignoring her. To be honest, I wanted to block her number right there. But doing that would cause problems for Carter and my in-laws. So I held back. My WhatsApp and voicemail were piling up with messages like, Get divorced! And disappear from Carter's life already! I even started to think that maybe it would be easier to just cut ties with her. Then one day, while I was at work, Brittany called. So when are you finally getting divorced? I was busy with work and already stressed out. I couldn't take it anymore. This time, I snapped back at her. I have no intention of divorcing Carter. Brittany chuckled and said, <laughs> Your feelings don't matter. Carter's next wife is already lined up. Wait, what? His next wife means a woman he'll marry after me? Ignoring my confusion, Brittany continued. She's a hardworking woman, not like you just sitting at a desk all day. She's worlds apart from you in looks and style. You can't even compare. Then, Brittany sent a photo of the woman, supposedly Carter's next wife, on WhatsApp. The moment I saw that familiar face, I vowed to get my revenge on Brittany. I couldn't believe she was trying to find a new wife for Carter just to get him to divorce me. And the woman she picked was her. She's beautiful, I responded sarcastically and went back to my work. A few days later, Brittany called again while I was at home. Hello? As soon as I answered, I heard her giggle. <laughs> oh, Monica, have you made up your mind yet? Made up my mind about what? <laughs> Brittany laughed aloud. Don't play dumb, I told you. Carter already has someone else. It's just a matter of time before he dumps you. That's for Carter to decide, not you. What? Who do you think you're talking to? Stop making things complicated and just get a divorce already. I simply replied to Brittany. Understood. Caught off guard by my straightforward response, Brittany mutters. What? You mean you'll get a divorce? Yes. Finally, you get what I'm saying. So, when are you getting divorced? Do you have a date? Probably today or tomorrow. Everything should be sorted out. Brittany excitedly shouts, Really? You heard me. Make sure you divorce by today or tomorrow. If you don't, you won't be forgiven. With that final statement, Brittany hangs up the phone. I report the entire situation to Carter. I also make sure to say, Let Ricky know too. The next day, I receive another call from Brittany. Monica, today's the day, right? You're divorced from Carter. Even without seeing her face, I can tell from her tone that she's mocking me. She seems to be relishing in my reaction over the phone. In a calm tone, I clearly tell her. I just filed the divorce papers. What? You already filed them? Thinking she's finally got me. Brittany can't help but demean me. I can't believe I'm finally free of you. This is amazing. Just the thought of never having to see your face again makes me so happy. 
Next time, choose a man more suited to your lowly status, okay? <laughs> Hearing Brittany's hearty laughter on the phone, I can't help but smile. Careful not to give away my composure, I cautiously open my mouth. Brittany, are you misunderstanding something? Pull back to reality, Brittany asks. Misunderstanding? What are you talking about? The divorce papers aren't for me and Carter. They're for Ricky. What? Brittany is at a loss for words. I proceed to spell out the situation for Brittany. Brittany, you've been having an affair, haven't you? Ricky knows about it. What? Me? Having an affair? There's no way I would do such a thing. He's known for a while now, actually. Carter and I heard it from Ricky himself. I guess Brittany had always planned to divorce Ricky. She'd even prepped the divorce papers, all signed and ready to go. Her plan was to marry her current boyfriend and set up her beloved brother Carter with the boyfriend's sister. That way she could stay close to Carter forever. When Ricky discovered the affair, he also found the signed divorce papers at home. He added his own signature and filed them without telling Brittany. Brittany's voice trembled as she said, Is this a joke? Her voice was lower than I'd ever heard it. Why? Why would you do that? You see, Brittany had previously sent a picture of Carter's future wife. Turns out she's a sister of Brittany's secret lover. I recognized her because she's in sales and frequents my workplace. Since I work at the reception desk, I always see her come in. One day, I showed her Brittany's picture and asked about their relationship. She spilled the beans immediately. She's my brother's girlfriend, she said. I reported this to my brother-in-law, Ricky, and that led us to hatch this plan. Life never works out as perfectly as this. Her admission gave us all the evidence we needed to uncover Brittany's real intentions. Hearing about the scheme, Brittany got frantic and raised her voice. You knew all along? Well, I guess so. You pulled Ricky into this elaborate scheme? Yes, exactly. I thought it would be the best revenge on you. Revenge? You can't be serious. Cornered by the undeniable reality, Brittany let out a scream that could burst eardrums. Is this some kind of joke? Brittany's confusion was, frankly, amusing. I mean, it makes sense. The woman she loathed for years, her brother's wife, knew about her affair. And the divorce papers were filed not by her, but by her own husband. You can imagine the humiliation. She had been systematically turned tables on by the very person she'd been tormenting. Feeling utterly humiliated, Brittany let out a high-pitched scream over the phone. Thinking you've defeated me is a big mistake. You're no match for me. I'll make you regret this, I swear. Without listening any further, I hung up the phone. Whew, what a relief. I blocked her number and her WhatsApp, officially cutting ties with Brittany. Carter, my husband, was of course on board with the decision. A little follow-up. Turns out, Brittany's affair partner didn't know she was married. Upon realizing his mistake, he broke things off with her immediately. Brittany, who had cheated, naturally has to pay alimony. But she doesn't have any savings to speak of since she was a stay-at-home mom. Now she's juggling multiple part-time jobs just to make those payments. Her life has become a daily struggle, something I couldn't have imagined before. As for us, we decided to move because of Carter's job transfer. While cutting ties with Brittany was rewarding enough, moving guaranteed a fresh start away from her. So, in an unexpected way, we gained some much-needed distance from her. During the move, my in-laws apologized profusely. Monica, we're so sorry for what Brittany has done. No apology could make what Brittany did right. We're sorry, Monica. It's not something they should be apologizing for. But we accepted their apologies and completed our move. Leaving our kind in-laws was tough, of course. But the joy of no longer having to deal with Brittany outweighed that sadness. Life in a new place has its challenges, 
but we're happy now. Feeling free from stress, maybe it's time to think about starting a family. With that thought in mind, I went out shopping. From now on, I don't have to fear running into Brittany when I go out. Just thinking that made my future feel a whole lot brighter. <laughs>